Today we are gonna throw some shit away. It is the end of the year. It's the perfect time to grab some eggnog, take some books that I don't want anymore, and just throw them out. Well, by throw them out, I'm gonna donate them to a bookmobile that actually parks up the street once a week. It's one of only three bookmobiles that exist in Canada right now. It's so cool, so cute. If you're curious about it, even if you don't live in Edmonton, it's a pretty cool thing to support. It's called Daisy Chain Book Co. You can find it at daisychainbook.co. But forget about that, that's not what we're here for today. Today I am doing the Book Unhaul Challenge, which I first saw at um, Gloria from Gloria and the Neverending TBR, one of the best names on BookTube. If you don't follow her, she's great. I'll put a link to her video down below. Check her out. She just restarted her channel and she's just wonderful. She deserves so many more subscribers than she has, so give her a follow, please. The original video was from, I wanna say, Books and Lala, I think. Um, if I find that out, uh, I'll put that below as well, but um, it's essentially a tag to get you to throw out like 10 books that you just have been holding on to for whatever reason and you don't need them anymore, so this is the excuse you need to just throw them over a cliff. And again, by cliff, I mean donate them to someone who needs them. So let's get to it. I've got my eggnog, I have a belly full of rum, a table full of books that I can't wait to chuck out my front door. So let's get to it. And the first one is a book that I rated low. I did this last month. I, uh, I talked about it at length in a video. I'll, uh, I'll link that one down below. And so I won't talk about this too, too much um, today because I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it and I'm throwing it out. That's why, that's why we're here today. And that is uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I think this is a racist piece of shit. And I also think it's a bad book even though it's you know one of the most famous books of all time. I've read this three times by now. I'm so sick of Joseph Conrad and uh, bye. I just scared the shit out of my dog so, so badly. I, I shouldn't have done that. That's the last one I'll throw, Nova, I promise. Book number two, a book that I changed my mind about. I looked really hard um, for a book that I changed my mind about and I couldn't really find one because I, I kind of read the question as a book that I used to like and now that I don't so I'm going to throw it out. I have a couple of books like that but I'm just not quite ready to say I'm done with them yet and I, I'm going to throw it out. So I'm going to change it up a little bit and go with an author I changed my mind about. I own two Juno Diaz books. Um, this is how you lose her and also the uh, Oscar Wilde, whatever the hell, The Wondrous Life, whatever that title is. I've been reticent to read Juno Diaz for a couple of years because I read like an article he wrote online a couple of years ago and I thought he sounded like a complete idiot. I couldn't tell if he was being sarcastic or whether he was being serious or whether he was trying to be funny or not. I, I couldn't get a read on it and it just came off so annoying. So I just couldn't bring myself to read his books and so they just kind of sat on my shelf for a couple of years and then 2018 came around and it's become quite obvious that Juno Diaz is a piece of shit human being. So, yay, I don't have to be conflicted anymore. I have a really hard time separating the art from the artist and now that all his kind of sexual allegations have come out and he just seems like a generally terrible guy with anger issues. He seems like a complete moron. Um, yeah, I'm done. Done with Juno Diaz, see you later. Book number three is a series that I know that I'm not gonna complete. Um, this one's going to bother some people, I think, because um, this author has become very, very popular on BookTube, I think, and that's A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Um, wasn't she Victoria Schwab at one point and she's kind of become V.E. Schwab? When did that happen? Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't hate this book at all. It was just one of those books where I knew when I finished it, I'm just not going to commit to reading three of these. I just, one was kind of enough for me. It was good, but it wasn't kind of the five-star book that it, that a lot of people think that it is. Mm. People who don't like eggnog, I just, what are you doing? So yeah, A Darker Shade of Magic, I just know that I'm not gonna finish it. I'll give it to somebody who will want it more than I will. Hopefully they'll really enjoy it. Book number four is a book that I DNF'd. This one is really easy to pick. I've been kind of looking forward to throwing this out for a couple of years. 
and that's The Antagonist by Lynn Cody. Uh, I couldn't even tell you what this is about at this point. Um, it was shortlisted for the Giller Prize a couple of years ago, and I bought it right away um, because I've heard such good things about Lynn Cody, and I, I hated this book so much. Like, I, I, I don't remember anything about what it's about. I just remember the, the antagonist, the main character, was just difficult to deal with. I just found it a really annoying book to read. I don't even remember why. I don't even care anymore. Maybe I was in the wrong place in my life and I just wasn't ready for it. I don't know. I don't care. I know that I'm not going to read this because I was I was so turned off by it. Um, and uh, but I'm I'm positive that it's a good book and a lot of people will like it. So I'm actually quite happy to be able to donate this to uh, um, to a traveling library and it'll find a good home at some point. Number five is a book that I own multiple copies of, and that's going to be Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. I just bought the Folio Society version. Of, uh, of Midnight's Children, which is obviously a much nicer book than this, even though it's it's quite a nice book. Um, really excited to read Midnight's Children. It's on my docket for 2019, for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, now that I have two versions and one of them costs a lot of money, I certainly don't need this one anymore, so I will pass this one on. Number six is a book that I'll never actually get to, and that one is going to be the Tagore Omnibus. I absolutely will never read this book. The only reason I have it is because a couple of years ago, I decided I was going to pick one of these top 100 books of all time lists and, uh, and read all the way through it, and the Tagore Omnibus was one of the first three or four books on that list, so I bought it. I'm not re doing that reading challenge anymore, so I'm... I'm never going to get to this. I have no desire to read it, really. Ironically, I'm doing my own version of the top 100 books um, to read now that I'm on booktube. If you have no idea, if you just see my channel for the first time today or the last couple of videos that I put out, uh, I started my channel because I want to read through kind of a consensus top 125 books of all time. And what I did was took like six of these major top 100 books to read before you die kind of lists compile them all together and and just to see what books they had in common. And there was 125 books that existed on more than one of these lists. So that became my list of 125 books. The consensus top 125 books of all time that I want to read through over the next couple of years. Um, that's why I started the channel. I'm going to be doing it kind of casually though. That's not certainly the, the only reason I'm here. Um, it's kind of it's gonna kind of be in the background a little bit, just to give me somewhat of a framework as I as I do the whole booktube thing. But so now that I'm doing my own version of this, I don't need Tagore, so that book's done. Number seven is a book I bought because of the hype. That book was pretty easy. That's gonna be The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. I really really didn't like this book. Actually, the book was fine. I guess I was just so hyped to read it. I I discovered The Immortalists like nine months, I think, before it actually was published. And so I was kind of waiting with bated breath for almost a year to read this book. I was so sure that I was going to love it. I just adore the, pre the, the premise of this book. And it was just so underwhelming. It just did not deliver on the cool idea that sparked this novel at all. So um, I'm really, really happy to to get rid of this book. This is the second Chloe Benjamin book in a row that I've been really, really disappointed with. The first, her first book, I think it was her first book, Anatomy of Dreams it was called. Very same thing. Uh, really excited to read it and it was a total letdown. So never again, Chloe Benjamin, you're not gonna beat me next time. That's the last book of yours I'm ever gonna read. Number eight, a book that I bought just because of the cover. That was originally gonna be The Immortalists because that was the first reason I wanted to buy it because it has such an amazing cover, but because I can't use it for two books, I'm going to choose um, Alethea Unseen. I don't think this has the most beautiful cover of all time, uh, but the colors just totally grabbed me when I saw it on the shelf, and that's, that's, that's what brought my attention to it. I knew nothing about the book when I bought it, I just kind of picked it up because I, I thought it was so striking on the shelf. And I've owned it for a couple of years. It, it, Apparently it's a pretty good book. It, it looks like a pretty good book. Like it's got some uh, some blurbs by Gregory Maguire, who I love. Uh, Neil Gaiman blurbs it. It sounds like it's pretty decent. I just like I've owned it for a couple of years, and I just for whatever reason I just 
don't think that I'm ever going to really get to it. So uh, it's in basically perfect condition, so someone will really enjoy it when they grab it. So um, I'll get rid of it today. Ah. Number nine, a book that I don't know anything about. That was a really, when I saw that question, I was like, that's really weird. How am I going to find a book that I own that I don't know anything about? And then I picked up this book, The Yana Lossy Riding Camp for Girls. I have no fucking idea why I have this book. But uh, I have it, apparently. So I know nothing about it. Nothing about the name or the presentation of it really makes me uh, excited. So that's an easy one. Mm. Down the hatch. Number 10, last but not least, is a book that I didn't buy, and that's gonna be We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. The fact that I'm gonna throw this out has nothing to do with my desire to read the book because everything I've heard about it is really, really good. Like, I know a lot of people whose opinion I really trust and they really liked the book. The only reason I know that I'm not going to read it is that it's an advanced reader's copy, and I've discovered that I absolutely hate owning arcs. I hate the fact that it says advanced reader's copy right up here. On the back it has like a national marketing campaign thing. The sale date. Like it's just, that's not what this book is supposed to look like and it's like you get the thing with it saying that it's an unedited proof. Like it's, it's not the final proof so there could be changes in the book before it actually hits shelves. Everything about arcs drive me crazy other than the fact that you get to read them early. That's cool but I hate owning the arc of a book as like the only version of that book if I really like it. So um, I think if I'm going to read this book, I'm actually just going to go out and buy it. Um, but I know a lot of people don't care about these little things. Like it's, that's kind of a silly thing to care about. It's what's inside that really matters. But so there will be some people who would love to have this book and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to give it to them. So there you have it guys, that's my book on haul challenge list. Thank you Gloria so much for uh, for tipping me off to this. All that's left to do is uh, finish off my eggnog and uh, I'll see you guys soon. So this is hilarious. For the last couple of minutes I could hear my dog just over here chewing on something but I was like I'll just finish doing the video then I'll go check to see what she's chewing on. So I just went over to find out what it is and she got a hold of Heart of Darkness that I just threw on the ground and she, she's destroyed it. <laughs> oh, Nova, I love you so much. This book sucks so much shit and you just ate it. I, uh, this is the perfect end to this fucking book.